What's going on everybody? This is Joe and I am back for another Streets of New Capenna pre-release pack opening or kit opening, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, I have opened more pre-release kits than anybody else here on YouTube and I am not going to be stopping anytime soon. If you missed our opening already, we did the uh, all five families in one video at uh, pre-release itself and you can check in the I card in the top corner there to go watch that video for yourself if you missed out. I think, I'm not so sure, but I think, I mean, I know we gave away codes in that one and I haven't seen people in the comments saying that they used them. So it's possible that there are some others. Uh, in terms of how we're going to do these, this is going to be one per video. You probably already saw from the title or the description or whatever, uh, the thumbnail, etc. that we are going to be opening an Obscura box today, and we are going to be going in Wooburg order. Now, what do I mean? They're, they're three color families, Joe. Well, interesting. I'm a man who enjoys uh, patterns a lot. Um, and so something that I noticed is this is the order that I put these boxes in. And the reason is because the first uh, color of each of the families goes in Wooburg order. So white is here, blue, black, red, and green. But not only that, I said I like patterns. If you look next to the green is white. Don't worry about this blue, we'll come back to that. But white, blue, black, red, green are the middle colors. Now, because we ended with green over here, and you go to the next one that's white, we ended with green here, you go to the next one that's white. So white, blue, black, red, green. Perfect pattern, I love it, it made me very happy. I hope you enjoyed that as well. It was just something for fun that I, that I uh, noticed. Uh, and I love that it works out that way. Really, really cool. Um, and so we're going to be here opening Obscura first, because I'm just literally going in that order. Um, and as people may have seen or may not have seen, this is what the side of the box looks like. I do not like this box design at all. I actually really hate it. The only thing I enjoy about it, I will not lie, is this. When you peel it off underneath, it says knowledge is power. And you get to kind of reveal that. Now, obviously, they all... Each family has their own tagline. My issue that I have with this is that you open it up this way. It's got these cool like designs and stuff on there for the Obscura symbol and everything. It's got like punch out plus one plus one counters. And uh, on the other side, I believe they're shield counters. Yes, that's correct. I don't know the best way to show that to all of you. Here we go. That'll work. There's shield counters on the other side, which helps out for gameplay, etc. My issue is when you open this box up and push out the contents, which is another box of its own. And again, now you can see that that's what these inner boxes or these bottom boxes are, is just the inner boxes from here, or sorry, that's the top boxes, are the, are the inner boxes because you have the bosses on the other side. And then the bottom boxes are just the one side of here. My issue is like now, if I'm at an event, right, specifically the pre-release, because I went to multiple pre-releases, that's where those videos were filmed, and you can check all that stuff out, like I said, on the channel. Um, uh, now, like, at the end of the event, do I, do I put this back here? I, so I put this back in here, and then, I, and then I close this up, right, and wrap it back up again. And now, I guess I, I, guess I carry it home, but... Like, the second you let go of it, I mean, it's on a flat surface right now, so it doesn't as much. But, like, it's just going to flop out like that. So, okay, hey, you know what, Joe? Just rest it on the table. That'll be fine, right? Yes. Thankfully, it works. Usually, and I guess maybe this one is a little different than most, like, if you pick this up, it just immediately pops out like that. Obviously, you have to, like, be very meticulous about how you're holding it, etc. And for people that have been to pre-releases and stuff, this is just not very conducive to being able to save this at all. Like, this just ends up getting thrown out or whatever. Like, even when you pop all these things out and there's, like, you know, uh, some pictures on the inside that we showed off in that, in that video and... Uh, on the backs of these, there's like an angel on one and a devil on the other. So like, that's kind of cool, but then you're just left with this. Like, do you save this? Do you throw this away? It's, it's uh, different, as you can tell, than what the inside looks like, right? Like you've got this uh, background art of the cityscape or whatever. So it is slightly different. I just, I just do not like it. I don't think this design makes a lot of sense. Like that one moment where you peel the thing off and there's that message on the inside is really cool. And then anything after that, it's just like, I don't understand the purpose of this anymore. Like it's just creating unnecessary trash. 
that kind of frustrates me a lot. I understand, I, I, I imagine, I don't understand, but I imagine that it was done in order to reduce plastic waste, because this is at least cardboard waste that can be recycled, whereas before it was just this box here, or a box like this here, coated in plastic, you would rip the plastic off and then throw it in the trash, as opposed to this, which can hopefully go in the recycling. But also, and this is to say nothing of our sponsor store because I don't actually know how they handle things, so I will be very uh, honest about that, but I imagine that for um, local game stores, it's gonna be a little bit difficult when their employees are trying to clear off tables during a pre-release, it's gonna be very difficult for them to ascertain like, okay, this garbage that I'm grabbing is recycling garbage versus this garbage that I'm grabbing just goes in the regular trash can. Like that's just making so much more work for the employees and asking the players to do it would be nice, but is not a foolproof system. So just, again, my personal opinions, I would love to hear other folks' thoughts down in the comments below. We shouldn't have to go through that whole thing for every one of these openings, so I do apologize and thank you for bearing with me. But here we are with the Obscura box. This is another thing that I kind of despise about uh, these particular sets uh, of, or this particular set with pre-release, is these dice. The last time we were on a three-color plane, to my recollection, is Cons of Tarkir slash Dragons of Tarkir slash Fate Reforged, etc. Um, and all of those dice, I know because I own them all, are specially catered to that plane. And especially catered, I should say specially catered to that three-color uh, uh, trio. These are just the regular dice. It's lazy. And it, it, it annoys me. I would have loved to have seen them at least attempt to do something different than just the set, um, you know, the regular uh, crappy five color dice, one of each color, and then just the regular set symbol. Like in the past, it's been that you would get the guild dice that have the symbols on them as the 20. Like they, they did everything else but that. That bothers me as well. But hey, now that we've talked about all the things that have bothered me, let's get on to the opening, huh? Jesus. Uh, obviously, in this opening, for something a little bit more light and fun, we are going to be giving away a code for MTG Arena. As I mentioned, the, um, the, the five opening video that we did also had that um, and had uh, packs that we gave away. Uh, or, uh, yeah, a code that we gave away. Sorry, I was looking at the packs and I got distracted. Uh, and so um, if you want to go check that out and see if any of those are available, please feel free. But otherwise, you can definitely uh, wait for this one as well. We have the little insert here with the Obscura symbol. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's this building a pre-release deck, which again, for a pre-release, a great event for new players. Uh, and we have the uh, little insert for the Obscura Gifted Magicians. It says the Obscura are talented wizards and mystics who use their power to deceive and blackmail. Using distractions, illusions, and hidden mechanisms, they orchestrate scenarios and manipulate outcomes to their benefit. They endeavor to maintain a facade of normalcy in their everyday lives, which allows them to run their schemes without disruption. I'm giving you a little bit of flavor there, which I appreciate, obviously, as uh, Vorthos here on this channel. We do, uh, we have been reviewing the, um, the stories for Streets of New Capenna and really every story that comes out, especially now that they are, thank God, back to uh, free again. So there is that. Um, but let's see, this is our seeded pack, again, for folks who might be unfamiliar with how this works. This is a seeded pack because we picked the Obscura. This is gonna be a seeded pack that is going to be cards that are white and or blue and or black, um, and will be able to help us be in that family a little bit better than the random packs that you saw a moment ago um, that might not be able to help us out as much with that, because that's pure luck of the draw. We have a Shattered Seraph to start. They, all of these, uh, kits and all these seeded packs have this card, aka this one of this cycle for the three color uh, family uh, as the first card, which is great. Super helpful. So Shattered Seraph is first. Obscura Storefront, very nice to get the land as well. Uh, one of the dual lands for these three colors. Skybridge Towers. A Celestial Regulator in the two Skybridge Towers colors, but again, in two of the Obscura colors as well. Great card, too. Rafine's Informant, quite nice. Uh, conniving is fantastic. Obscura Initiate, got the name, like, you can still, um, you could play this in any deck, like, this could go in a blue-white deck, like for Brokers, or part blue-white. Uh, it could go in blue-black, aka Maestro's. Um, or things like that. So this does not have to be just Obscura. Um, so this does help out. I mean, obviously, Rafine's Informant too, right? 
This could just go in any deck that has white. So Cabaretti, Brokers, or Obscura. And so if you end up moving away, this this seated pack can still help you be in other colors. It's not like all of these are blanks, um, even if you don't end up going Obscura in the end. We have an Incriminate, Revel Ruiner, Rafine's Guidance, Revelation of Power, Illuminator Virtuoso is our first uncommon, not a bad one at all. A Psychic Pickpocket is the second, very interesting. And Obscura Charm, very nice. I don't think you are guaranteed, in fact, I'm almost certain you're not guaranteed the charms in the seated pack, but this is a very nice open. I like it a lot. So here's the Obscura Charm as our third uncommon, which means our non-promo rare or mythic is... To lose Clever Conductor. So again, this is another card that does not have to go just in Obscura. It can be triple blue. It could be blue, blue, black. It could be white, blue, blue. Like you can do multiple different things with this. So this is a um, very helpful for being in um, any type of family that you want to be, except for maybe Riveteers and Cabaretti. But still, uh, this is this is really cool. So here's Toulouse, not a bad card at all, especially with the um, all the benefits for conniving. And then our promo foil, rare or mythic, is... Ooh, a, an Obscura Ascendancy. It is very Pringled, uh, <laughs> but it's very cool uh, and actually looks sick. Look at that foiling. I like that a lot. That orb, obviously, in the middle is incredible. Um... But yeah, like look at look at its separation just from the card behind it. Can you see that? Maybe not. Kind of. It's not as it's not as egregious on uh on camera as it is in real life, I assure you. But you can kind of see through those cards at the boxes behind it cuz the the front card is pringled uh, a fair amount. So, anyway, obscure ascendancy very nice. Um I know that not all of the is it the promos or the rares in that pack? I think it's all the promos. Not all the promos are your colors, definitively. So the fact that we got not only uh, uh, an on-color promo, but the actual ascendancy for the family to go with the charm and the Toulouse in the same pack, like this seated pack is phenomenal. Really, really good. Then we have a treasure token, which on the other side is a fish token as well. Very cool. Okay, let's go on to the packs themselves. We'll see if these packs uh, help us to stay in Obscura or if they start pulling us in any other direction. Obviously, as I discussed, uh, going into Brokers or into Maestros would be pretty easy from here, um, but I'd rather stay Obscura if we can. And I mean, going into, we could also obviously splash into Brokers or Maestros as well. We have a Kaldaya Strongarm to start. Crooked Custodian. Case the Joint. Speak Easy Server, a Plasma Jockey, Botanical Plaza, so here is a way that we could splash into Brokers if we wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, I guess, you know, if there's like a Bomb Brokers Rare or a Bomb Green Rare, that is something that we would at least be able to consider now that we know that we have at least this Plaza. We have another Celestial Regulator, very nice to open that. Sky Crier, not a bad one at all. Cabaretti Initiate, again, uh, this is this is not something you would splash, so not, not for us. Darling of the Masses, on the other hand, depending on how we look citizens-wise, this is definitely a consideration if we're uh, anywhere near green. So Darling of the Masses is a very good card and our first uncommon. We have Illicit Shipment, which is an interesting one. I don't love this card for limited, but still. Uh, and it's our second. And our third is Discipline Duelist. This, another card that would be pretty good to splash green for. Now, notably, it is three mana, and obviously we would love to be able to actually play this on turn three um, on curve, because that would be pretty great. But it doesn't have to be. Um, and again, this is something that we can consider playing green for, or, or splashing green for, along with this Darling of the Masses. And then our Rare or Mythic in this pack is... Woo, an alt art. I like this one. Zaya Torres Envoy. Now, notably, this we would need to splash green and uh, red, and that's obviously if we stay Obscura. So this one probably does not make the cut, but is still a very good card and something that we will consider as we go along. But like with Toulouse and Obscura Ascendancy and Obscura Charm, it's going to be, we're going to need something very tempting to move away from Obscura. 
um, to this, especially this early on. So Zyator is Envoy, pretty cool. I think we have a foil back here. We do. It is a foil common in Join the Maestros. Very nice. I have not seen this in foil yet. I like the armor. Obviously, with any of these, I like the, um, the watermark here at the bottom. Very cool. Yeah, that armor is sick. Okay. Uh, and then behind it, an island as well. And a fish token. Moving right along to our next random pack, our second random pack, and our third overall. We have a backup agent, very cool, good card. An exhibition magician, I <laughs> love that name so much. Most wanted, I'm not in love with this card, but if we're trying to go kind of crazy with the Illuminator Virtuoso, this might go, go in, I doubt it, because um, again, I don't love it, but it's uh, available. We have a deal gone bad. This is a very nice one. Removal is pretty important. Uh, and we are in black, which is one of the like heavier removal colors, um, but we're not in red. So it's something we'll have to keep an eye out for. Speaking of removal colors, here is <laughs> here's witness protection. Uh, this is not everyone's favorite removal spell. I'm okay with it, I think. So it would probably get in. Wow, speaking of removal, good Lord, three in a row. Okay, hold for ransom. Again, I like this one probably more than most. Um, I'm totally okay with this. It worked out quite well when I used it in pre-release because by the time they get to seven mana, like you drawing a card is kind of exactly what you want. And then you have other ways of dealing with their creature that you locked down with this hold for ransom way earlier on. There's a mayhem patrol, an ominous parcel, waterfront district alt art. I have not seen this alt art either. Very, very cool. Um, this again uh, is perfect for our colors. Exactly what we want. So yes, please. I will, I will play this no matter what, this gets in. Jetmere's Fixer, uh, again, probably not, uh, or certainly not a card that we are using. It's not in any of Obscura's colors. We have Public Enemy. I think this card is fine. Um, I guess it's interesting. I guess we would have to uh, check and see what our cards do um and <laughs> in terms of like what our creatures want to be doing if we want our creatures to be getting bigger and conniving and getting counters and etc then we don't want this one but if we have some creatures that we're okay with dying like some maestros type mechanics since we're blue and black um it, it might be okay and then i mean drawing a card is is kind of nice it like replaces itself but only just so that's our first uncommon we have the cabaretti charm definitely not something we can play and a Nightclubber, which we definitely can play, and again, great name on this card. Our Rare or Mythic in this pack is... A Cut Your Losses. I don't love this card. I am aware that, uh, especially in uh, sealed events, or pre-release events in particular, that games can go long, and I know that even in draft... People have been decking, especially in like connive type decks and things like that. This only mills half of their library, which in limited, um, you know, can be up to 20 cards, I suppose. I guess if they're playing more than 40 in their deck, it could be different. But uh, it it's still, it's a lot of mana. And a casualty too, to duplicate it, like you're still milling half and then half. So realize that that will never bring them to zero, but you could make it so that, you know, their next draw is their last card. Um, but it does not kind of win you the game. I think I'm, I'm like 50, 50 on this one. Again, I'd have to check it's in our colors. So maybe it gets in. I would love your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think is, is cut your losses good enough? Am I crazy? Like it's just insane. Or do you agree with me that, that you'd have to debate it? And then behind that, we do not have a foil this time. We have a planes and a spirit token, which I do not think I've seen this spirit token yet. This art is awesome and kind of haunting, which I mean, I guess is what you're going for, but still, damn. Okay, we have three more packs to go. We are halfway through. Let's see if this one helps us or hurts us uh, in the realm of doing some nonsense with Obscura. We have another Kaldaya Strongarm to start. Another Revel Ruiner, very nice. A Backstreet Bruiser. Uh, the joke is to say, all right. But honestly, all right, I, I would, you know, this might be a 23rd, but I would put this in. A, another Revelation of Power. I don't love the first one of these, so the second one would be a little bit tougher. But it works for uh, this set pretty well because, uh, or this set, for this family pretty well, excuse me. 
because you're going to get your creatures having plus one, plus one counters on them because of the conniving, at least hopefully. And so if that's the case, you have more of a chance of them gaining flying and lifelink as well. A plasma jockey, again, a Capenna Express, not something that I would be splashing for if I'm splashing green. Rooftop Nuisance is not bad at all. Racer's Ring, uh, not the land that we need for fixing, uh, but is alt art as well, which is pretty cool. We have a Glamorous Outlaw. It is two of our three colors and can help us splash red if we wanted to. Plus, it helps splash itself. So some people would say, and I'm not necessarily not that person, but some people would say that this type of a card, you just straight include it because it can splash itself. And so you just, you know, it ends up costing you uh, eight mana over two turns, but you then get this four or five that deals two damage to them and you scry two. And so late game, which is when you're going to be playing a six mana card anyway, uh, scrying two is going to be super helpful and the extra two damage may very well just end the game at some point. So yeah, uh, again, let me know in the comments if you disagree, but this is the type of card that can get in as long as you are two of its three colors, which we are if we are Obscura. A security bypass, a very, very good card and is like an amazing combo with the um, Illuminator Virtuoso. That thing can get very big very quickly. Now, obviously, Voltroning on one creature is not the best strategy in the world because a single removal spell will get rid of it, but still pretty cool. We have a Tavern Swindler. I don't love this card as much as some people do, it seems. Um, it, it is just a two mana tutu. I understand the, the importance of bears in limited, but I don't love this one. Um, there is that combo with that card that's like, if you lose life on your turn, put a counter on it. If you gain life on your turn, put a counter on it and stuff like that. Um, but still, but this is our first uncommon. We have cleanup crew as our second, definitely not getting in, uh, even with splashing and a suspicious bookcase. I don't love this one as much. So this probably would not get in either. And our rare or mythic is a void rend. Very, very interesting. Okay. I'm okay with this one. I have been hit, or had my creatures, of course, hit with too many Void Rens, um, so it would be very nice to have one, and what a cool open in a random pack for the Obscura box. Very, very nice. Behind it, ooh, I was gonna say just an island. It's not just an island. It's a gorgeous full art island, again, that I have not seen yet. Very cool. I like that a lot. That's fantastic. And a Rhino Warrior token. I like this guy, too. Uh, hey, I said we were going to give away a code, and we are. Just a friendly reminder, folks, for those of you who are looking to use this code, be aware that you are only able to use one code per account on MTG Arena. So if this, if you already have used a code from uh, a pre-release kit for MTG or for um, Streets of New Capenna, then this one will not work for you. It is uh, for each set, obviously. But... Um, and or if you know that you're going to be getting one, then don't use this one because then the one that you get in your kit will be useless to you. Save this for somebody who may not have been able to get, uh, go out to a pre-release for themselves and get one of these codes. And if you do get this code and it does work for you, please shout it out in the comments down below. We would love to be able to congratulate you. And this is our small way of saying thank you to each and every one of you for watching our stuff. We really hope you enjoy. If you missed this code, there are obviously more openings to come, as you can see from this background here. So please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so that you will get notifications as soon as the next opening video comes out so that you can get there early and get the next code for yourselves. Again, thank you all so very much for being here. We hope you're all enjoying our stuff. We have, as I said, two more packs to go. Let's see if it helps us out. We can see uh, good old Xander here. Crime is an art form. Poor Xander. Uh, anyway, we have an attended socialite. A fake your own death. Backstreet Bruiser again. Rafine's Guidance again. Again, this one also I still don't love. It works with our Illuminator Virtuoso, but that's the only thing. And so this, I'd have to be in some dire straits to, to put this in as like our 23rd or whatever. We have a Witty Roastmaster, pretty good card, not for this deck, but still. Civic Gardener, not bad. For the Family, not bad. Daring Escape, we're getting a lot of green and red, which is a little upsetting. Civil Servant, uh, again, splashable, but this is a two mana card. Having this on two is a lot better than having it on like turn six. Um, so this would be a tough one to splash for. 
Um, it is an amazing card, but in this particular deck, probably not what we're wanting to do. We have a Gilded Pinions. I do not love this one. A Torch Breath is our first uncommon, again, in red, unfortunate. Angelic Observer, we would have to kind of count our citizens um, because a 3-3 three, three flyer that dies to like a one mana strangle uh, is not great if you pay close to six for it. And we're not really in the citizens deck, although we're like, you know, and the citizens deck is more cabaretty, which is two colors that we're not in. So yeah, I would really have to count our citizens. And even then I would heavily consider against this card. And a Venom Connoisseur, again, not really a card that I would uh, want to splash green for. And so, our next rare or mythic, let's see if it helps us out. It is... A Jaxus the Troublemaker. Like I said, a lot of red and green in this pack. That's kind of unfortunate. Interesting card, not for this deck. Behind Jaxus, no foil. We have a Swamp and a Treasure Token. We have one pack to go. I guess I can't complain about Jaxus. We got a Void Rend in our random packs in our Obscura box. So, you know, it's helping us out. Uh, we have a Witty Roastmaster to start. Another Civic Gardener, unfortunate. Uh, oh, okay. A Maestro's Initiate, not bad. So even though this is part red in the casting cost, uh, it could be blue instead, and we are those two colors. So Maestro's Initiate can definitely get in. Not a bad card to be able to use. Make Disappear, not bad at uh, either. Rafine's Informant, again, very nice. Sticky Fingers, again, not for us, but not bad. Echo Inspector is incredible. What a nice open in the last pack. I like it. I like it quite a bit. A Spara's Adjudicators. First of all, have not seen this alt art. This is a Broker's card, but as I said, this is one of those cards, like the Glamorous Outlaw that we saw before, that is in two of our three colors, and so can splash itself. And this card is incredible. Like, Glamorous Outlaw is great. It comes in, deals two damage, and you scry two. This is, and that's six mana for a four five. This is five mana for a four four, and blanks one of their creatures. It can't attack or block until your next turn. So you can play this down, get in for a strong attack. You could play this down and not get attacked, so you live for another turn. Um, this is great. What an awesome, awesome card. Uh, and almost certainly I would splash for this, even if I'm splashing no other green whatsoever. This can get in again, splashing for itself alone. We have a Maestro's Theater. Which, again, we could put in, I, I think too many of these is a big problem. Um, because you're, you need to count this as, we were talking about this during pre-release, we, meaning myself and some of the folks at the store. Um, you need to count this as like a half a land sometimes. Like if you have like one or two, it, it's probably fine. But if you end up with like four of these, uh, it would be, a, it's a little greedy to play too many of them as if you're counting it as one land. So, uh, because eventually you're just going to run out of land and you're going to need a certain number of them. So yeah, um, this is something that I would be aware of. It is two of our colors, so we could definitely put it in. Um, but just, uh, I want to be aware of not running too many of them. So it's a Maestro's Theater. Not bad. We have a Broker's Initiate, which can definitely get in, uh, cause again, blue and then, or sorry, white and then blue in the casting cost, um, for this 04. Unfortunate Pugnacious Pugilist, a very good card, and our first uncommon. A Vampire Scrivener, this is the one. Whenever you gain life during your turn, put a counter on it. Whenever you lose life during your turn, put a counter on it. Uh, and so this can get very big when coupled with the um, tap it, lose three life, flip a coin, possibly gain six life. Like, it, it's definitely not a two color or two card combo that I'm interested in putting in my limited deck, but it's something that I've seen, uh, and, you know, it's, it's kind of cheeky. So there's that. This could get in regardless, but I don't, I don't know. We'd have to check our life gain, life loss uh, stuff. And a Riveteer's Charm, which again, two colors that we're not in, so uh, we, we almost certainly do not play this. Uh, and our last rare or mythic is an Ognis the Dragon's Lash. So this needs to be at least a single red, but... It can then be red, 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 green, red, or red, black, red, or black, red, green. And so we already have Zyatora's Envoy as well. Um, 
This pack really liked us uh, being in Riveteers. I have not seen this alt art yet, and it is awesome. Uh, but this card, like Zayatora's Envoy, also in alt art, does not get in. We just can't do it. Um, but I still think that this would be a really sick uh, Obscure deck. Behind it, we have this cool full art swamp. I like that a lot. And a Rogue token. I, I mean, I still think because it's like new and different, I should probably, I mean, it's right in front of the Riveteers box too, so I guess that makes sense. But I should probably leave you looking at these guys, right? Like, that just makes sense to me. Um, so, hey, everybody. Thank you so very much for watching. I really hope everybody enjoyed. Please, as always, feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Would, do you agree with me? Would you uh, stick with this Obscura deck since we have Toulouse, Obscura uh, Ascendancy, the Charm and Voidrend, as well as any of these other awesome cards. Uh, would you splash for Disciplined Duelist, Darling of the Masses, Spar's Adjudicators, things like that? I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thank you so very much for watching. Oh, and uh, let us know if you play Cut Your Losses as well. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please don't forget we have other channels as well. Links down in the description box below. We're doing some really awesome stuff over on Video Games for All. So uh, we hope that you're checking that stuff out too. Uh, and then Amy is doing some amazing stuff over on Gluten Free for All as well. So if you have anybody in your life that is gluten free, lactose free, uh, you want to try to find some interesting recipes to make for them or some interesting um, brands to purchase for them, you should definitely be checking those videos out. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell on any of these Geek for All family of channels that you're visiting. And so, for now, from us here, I have been Joe, and as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.